Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner. I'm a former Special Operations Sniper and I'm the best-selling author of the Long Range Shooting Handbook and I want to talk to you about reading wind. So the hardest part about long range shooting, well that's not really true, there's a lot of hard parts, but one of the hardest parts about long range shooting is figuring out the wind's effect on your bullet all the way to the target. Now gravity is actually the biggest effect on your bullet, but it's pretty darn consistent so we can measure what happens one time and it's predictable what's going to happen the next time we can adjust for the elevation but the wind is not consistent it's pretty windy out here right now In another hour the wind might die completely so figuring out not only what direction the wind is blowing but the magnitude the the, the velocity of the wind can be pretty darn difficult and then even if you do figure out exactly the direction and the velocity then figuring out what it's going to do to your bullet is the whole next step and because every bullet behaves differently we're not going to be able to cover that here but at least I want to give you a tip and a trick to figure out what the wind's doing. Now one of the easiest ways people figure out wind speed is with a wind meter. I mean that's great, you can, you can buy the gadget and have it and pull it out and see exactly what the wind is doing right here. The problem is the wind where you're at really doesn't matter as much as the wind all the way to the target. And there's no one magic spot where the wind matters most. So the wind a quarter of the way to the target matters. The bullets may be going faster a quarter of the way to the target, so the wind won't have as much of an effect, but whatever effect the wind does have is going to keep that bullet going off of its path all the way down range, so it can still be a big problem. And the wind at the target, or just in front of the target, is going to move the bullet a bunch because the bullet's moving slower. It's not an issue of, of inertia because the bullet speed, it's just a matter of how long the bullet is exposed to that wind. So going slower is going to get more of it, and even though it's going to get off path more, it's not going to have as far to keep going off path. So how that all matters, man, you, we could get lost in the minutia of how that works. But the question should be coming up, how are you going to be able to tell the direction and the speed of the wind at all these different distances? Well, if you're going to pick one distance, I would say do about halfway or two thirds of the way to the target if you're just going to pick what the wind's doing at one area. And you could run down there with a wind meter and try and get a reading and come back and hope it doesn't change. But as you might already be able to tell or hear, the wind's been changing as we've been doing this video. So by the time you get it figured out, it could change on you. You could use range flags, and those give you a good idea too, but you're not always gonna have range flags. So let's talk about my favorite way to figure out what's going on with the wind. It's using optics. Okay, so the better quality optics you have, the better chance you're gonna have at doing this. It's all about the optical clarity and the accuracy of the adjustments for the focusing. You can do this with binoculars or, or a nice spotting scope like this. What you do is you look at the target you're gonna be shooting at first. So we'll look at the 700 yard target and I'm going to focus on that target. That way I can measure the height of it I need to, I can get the shooter on the target, I can get ready to shoot. But when I want to see what the wind is doing, I'm actually going to take the focus, I'm going to back the focus off to about the 500 yard distance. So now I'm looking at something at 500 yards that's nice and clear in the focus, I'm going to go back and look at that 700 yard target. And surprise, it's a little blurry, it's a little out of focus, because we're focused instead for 500. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that blurry 700 yard target, and I'm going to watch the heat waves. I can actually see the mirage and the heat waves moving in front of the target. Now, this doesn't just work where it's nice and warm out here in Texas. I see these heat waves and what we call mirage in snow. You will see them with a good quality optic. And the direction and how those heat waves are behaving will tell you what the wind is doing. So if the heat waves are going straight up and down, I like to call that a boiling mirage, that means you either have no wind or the wind is coming straight at you or straight away from you. Either way, you kind of treat it like no wind when you're shooting. But if the heat waves are starting to go at an angle to one side or the other, if they start to going about a 45 degree angle, my experience, I see that as about three to five mile an hour wind. As they start getting a little more horizontal, you're looking at five to eight miles an hour, and by the time they're straight horizontal, I see that as 10 miles an hour or more. Now, depending on how they behave, if they're nice and wavy inside the side, that's 10 miles an hour. When they start flattening out and getting really not as bumpy, really straight, you're looking at like 20 mile an hour wind. It can be pretty fast. Now, the way you can tell the direction of the wind is not only those angles, but you don't know if it's coming at you at a you know, 45 degree angle this way or if it's coming straight side to side, even though you can feel it here. So what you do is you take your scope and you just turn and you keep turning until those mirage waves get vertical. And when those waves go from an angle to a vertical position, I now know that's the direction the wind is blowing at me. So by using a high quality optic, I can not only tell the direction of the wind downrange, I can tell the magnitude. And the best tip I can give you for this is practice. 
get out there, look at it, see what it's doing, and shoot and watch the behavior and what happens at it. And after a while, you're going to get a feel for a certain look to that mirage and a certain effect on your bullet. So get out there, take some time to look through a spotting scope, take some notes, and see how good you can do.